Okay, Dulcie, I'm um, just looking through your um, CAE certificates. You got your first one in 1990. Yes. And you've got your last one now, re valid to 2017. Mm -hmm. So over those years, have you had any false positives? Uh, yes, I have. Um, I think in the middle, perhaps towards the early stages, uh, my vet at the time rang me and said, Dulcie, I have some bad news. Uh, one of your goats has turned up with a positive test. And I said, oh, who? I was thinking of all my show champions going out of the front gate, so to speak. And it was little Bramble, who's never left the property because she was a little pet goat who hadn't grown properly. So I just kept her as a pet. And it was Bramble who came back with what we now know as Skeeter as a false positive and so we had another test mm. and I just had to sit, a, sit out the worry and uh, she came back negative, negative. yes mm. but the, she's the only one I remember okay so in all those decades just one just the one yes yep. so that's pretty good yep I'm very proud of those certificates <laughs> yep yes. and there's certainly uh, a very large collection yes yep so tell me how you got a CAE free herd because most of your goats actually died of CAE yes. in the 1970s and they the did. 80s. Yes. Mm. In those days, we didn't know what it was, Sandra. It started up with mainly, I would say, a goatling would pop up a big knee. Mm. And we used to think they'd hurt themselves mm. because we had a rocky outcrop property and the goats could cavort down the hill and back again. But talking to other breeders at shows and so on, they had the same problem. Mm. And we, we just called it Big Knee, and we didn't know mm. anything about it. And so once we had more and more information come in over the years, and we found out that it could be, con could be contagious, we started to be very careful, and mm. uh, I certainly didn't buy in anything at the time. But going to shows, we didn't even consider that going to shows probably mm. was the main cause. And with me, it would have been, because... I was very competitive and I remember I used to go to sometimes uh, perhaps eight shows in the year and the milking competition at the Eka. I mm. always went into that if I could. Mm. And as we now know, uh, pooling milk is just sheer, it's just deadly uh, because all the milk in those days used to go in, into the same bucket to be milked, same ladle. Uh, same label, ladle to stir all the different milks and milk tipped back into your own bucket to feed your kids at the show. Mm. Thinking about it now, it's, it just sounds so horrible. You mm. know, we were we were killing our new stock coming on. Mm. So, but we didn't know at the time. So, most of my goats actually died out, or I had to have put down. Mm. And in those days, I had a very competent young vet in Nambour. I used to live at Palmwoods with the goats. And he came from Nambour, very interested mm. in what he was seeing and helped me through with a lot of painkillers. Uh, he took blood. Uh, he, he, uh, he... So you, you snatch birth the kids? Yes, yes. He, he, he advised me to snatch birth. And I think young Sandra Baxendall also was on the job then, mm. starting to know about it, and uh, also told us to do this. And... Once I knew what I had to do, it became quite a job because where do you find cow's colostrum and cow's milk? Fortunately, I lived in a farming area and I had a close friend called Liz and they had a dairy farm. So there's my cow's colostrum and cow's mm -hmm. milk. Then I had my best doe, Wimmerminna Regal, mm -hmm. to kid and I was on the uh, state committee at the time and uh, I told the committee members that Regal's going to kid and she's going to be put down after yes. she kids and we were talking about uh, snatch birthing mainly through all of that meeting and I found later when I rang everybody that Regal's going to kid mm. probably in a day mm. or two they arranged to all come up or lots of them to come and help me get that goat through her kidding and I had half half the state committee there mm -hmm. with me at the time uh, do you want me to describe yeah, what happened describe, how describe you. what happened uh, I rang around when Regal went into labor and 
to cut a long story short, she had a perfect labour. So mm. obviously CAE does not affect the birth process. Mm. Well, it didn't with her. She had a perfectly good natural labour and produced two normal kids, uh, feet, nose on feet first. So that was perfect. Mm. So, Regal's kidding. I became the dirty nurse. I stayed with my goat while she was giving birth. Uh, I had another person with a, a clean towel to pass the newborn kid immediately to this person. I didn't touch the towel, but she wrapped up the baby in the towel and took, a, took her back up to my laundry where I had Ron and Betty Lay, who were on the committee, and they were ready with a hot, uh, warm water bath and a lukewarm water bath again. She went. This kid went into two baths. First, the warm water bath with some solution in it, and Ron Lay pinched the kid's nose so she wouldn't breathe and dunked her under, just like they do with sheep. You know, the, the head went right down and up. And same with the other uh, lukewarm bath, nose up. Each time, the kid was wrapped in a new clean towel, mm. new clean towel. Uh, Betty Lay and another lady called Andassa Pickering uh, were in charge of feeding the new baby on the warm cow's colostrum mm. and then put in a, a lovely little grassy box. Yeah. By this time, another kid had, was going up the same ch <laughs> chain, <laughs> chain reaction, a uh, bloody and uh, mucus-stained kid in the towel, up the hill, in the laundry, same procedure, and a brand new white baby was put in another separate, they kept them in separate boxes as well, yep. so they were apart. Uh, it was a tra traumatic day, I can tell you. Uh, somebody went into town and bought us some hamburgers for lunch, I believe, I can't remember mm. now, but uh, it was a whole, almost, she kidded in the day, mm. thank goodness. In the afternoon, I rang my vet, Dr Baker, at Nambour and said, my mm. doe has kidded and what we had done, and he was very pleased. He said, what a lot of effort. And I said, it was wonderful. We had mm. about eight people on the property mm. helping me with these kids. Mm. And he said, now, what are you going to do? And I said, I'd like you to put Regal down. Mm. Uh, he, he came out, it was late, by late afternoon now. He said, I'll leave mm. it till early morning. He came out early morning, put Regal down, who, by the way, had recovered slightly, but she couldn't get up. Mm. She'd had it. She just couldn't yeah. get up anymore. Now, she had both the arthritic form, yes. mainly um, deformed legs. Yes. But Mate. she also had the lung form. She she had all the forms that I can remember. She had severely affected knee, uh, knees. Um, and also at her elbows had come out from her body as well to support her. Uh, she had a very severely affected breathing problem and the post-mortem showed that she, her lungs had solidified mm -hmm. and my vet thought how on earth could she have lived so long and she did she lived through the labor which was quite easy really um, uh, her, her lung her lung problem showed in her breathing she was always breathing with her mouth open as you can see mm -hmm. in the photographs there she was always like that <sighs> like that she couldn't take any exercise. I had to pen her for the last two weeks in the, in the goat shed with deep straw. And I, I packed her up. If she lay down, I'd just pack her up so that she didn't keep having to get up and down. And, of course, she weed and pooed and everything. And I, I looked after that end. I just kept changing the straw, changing, changing at the back end. And then uh, somebody would come, probably Ron Lay, would come and help me heave her over onto the other side so she'd have a, a bit mm. of a respite from and mainly mm. keep her off the rumen side keep mm. that rumen side uppermost so yeah. to speak so you had uh, other goats also with the yes, lung form yes I, I did mm -hmm. most of them got that form but most of them uh, they pine away mm -hmm. they lose a lot of weight uh, they were very skinny mm -hmm. they ate well uh, one thing that CAE didn't seem to affect my my type of CAE in the goats was they kept eating right mm. up to the end. I remember Regal had a good drink of water after kidding and she started to eat some leaves. Mm. I still remember doing that, mm. giving her some leaves and she ate them. But uh, it, it's very hard on the owner as well as the, the whole household's transformed mm. because I'm running around after sick goats. Uh, meanwhile, I've got a busy husband and 
children going to school mm. and everything sort of has to mm. re- revolve around mm. the Lord. Mm. And it, it was a, a terrible time. Mm. So CAE is what I call a, a, a malignant, insidious disease. Mm. That's what I can say. It's just the nastiest thing that an animal can contract. Yeah. And my goats went through it for years. Mm. It seems to build up into a herd and then the herd will crash. Yes. Is that what you found? Exactly. Mm. I had one. Arcadia showed one big knee. And I thought, oh, uh, as I said, I thought it might have been caused by injury. But then I found out with other breeders that they had it too. Mm. But after a few years, I think nearly all my goats had it. Mm. And we were on to the separation of kids, uh, the uh, substitution of cow's colostrum, cow's milk. Uh, we didn't even consider free goat's milk because we didn't know who was free. There were no mm. tests. We mm. had no tests at all. We had a few people onto it, uh, the DPI, Sandra Baxendall, mm. and one or two others were thinking further outwards, how can we stop it mm. and um, how do we get some sort of accreditation going? Mm. And I believe it was the Queensland DPI mm. It was mm. forefront in all the states, wasn't it? To yes. Queensland. Well, West Australia and Queensland. Oh, Qu- West Australia too, mm. yes. So there we are. We're, my first certificate, that is very stained. <laughs> that certificate is very stained, but it's stained because I used to cut it around to shows yes. to tell people mm. what to do because it's probably coffee or tea or something <laughs> spilled on it. Uh, and it's a my prized possession because uh, at that stage I was just accredited Mm. and previously I had to um, submit to one once a year tests and at one stage it was once every six months uh, we were having a test Mm. because nobody really knew Mm. what what it was and I'm still not sure who really found out what to do Mm. and who was it Um, it was joint American Western Australia, I think. Yeah, yeah. Western Australia. Yeah, yeah, good on. Yeah. So you kept those kids always separate? From no, the... no. Mm-hmm. Uh, in fact, I sold one kid because at that. No, I mean separate from your positive days. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, I didn't have any left, mm. more or less. So the, any positive days would have been on the other side of the hill anyway. Mm. So I had uh, one side of the hill with a good shedding arrangement, then the house area. And then the other side of the hill, I had a small chook yard, which we'd um, reconvert, uh, no chooks in it, and I'd uh, put the clean goats into that, mm. that side of it. So they're completely away from each other. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 